the body of Christ. Amen. Praise God. I would just like to say thank you to everyone that um, made their way here. It's a little warm, but we don't have any rain. Amen. And if you're here in the parking lot and you just need some refreshing, feel free to go inside and through those doors. We have the air conditioner running. But if, if the shade will do, then stay out here so that we can praise and worship along with you. So the church, the body of Christ, who are we? Where are our uh, four scripture comes from uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 12. And our core values are love, evangelize, disciple, sacrifice, and give. Our mission is, is not anything that's made up, but it is from the Bible by the Great Commission, with the Great Commissioner, it is to proclaim the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, preaching the kingdom of God. Amen. And at this time, on behalf of Pastor Chris and myself and ministers and friends, deacons, and, and everyone that holds a place here at the Church of the Body of Christ, we like to welcome all of our visitors. Thank you so very much for coming out and joining us here today. Amen. And, and again, I would just like to say thank you to everyone who has been giving so freely, giving of your time, your energy, 
your um, your financial uh, resources, your prayers to to keep us going. The reason why we are here, outside, aside from Jesus Christ, is because of your dedication to continue to build the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Um, just wanted to give one more announcement. Um, Pastor Chris have charged the ministry, and if you're in there, um, there's some ways to give. So we are a mission-centered um, uh, ministry, uh, missions within and missions going out. Amen. So normally we go uh, abroad every year to Honduras, and we support the Haiti effort where we have partnered with Maranatha Life Changing Church. But because of the pandemic, we are unable to do that. So Pastor Chris had charged everyone, and thank you for those who have already given to that, um, uh, to that. but um, we are asking for $1,000 to give toward our missions. And that could be 10 families giving $100 each, or it could be an individual giving 50 or even $5. Whatever you give, just put it for missions. And in reference to giving, there are ways that you can give here. Um, if you're online, you can give by paper. Go straight to the word. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. Prepare your hearts and your mind. May I get some water? So praise God, to whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Between the years of 1941 and 1945, some six million European Jewish people were murdered during the Holocaust. In the past months, we witnessed through video the death of George Floyd. My own family can attest to this one. My oldest daughter reminded me of a time where both her and her, well, excuse me, where her brother and youngest sister, me and Pastor Chris, uh, daughter and son, was admitted to the hospital within hours of one another. As a favor to the family, the hospital placed our children in the same room. I can remember my son being concerned over his baby brother because he heard her crying. But what a sight to see and to witness. Some of you may be familiar with the name Gordon, maybe or maybe not. Or maybe you're a little more familiar with his, another name that was given to him. His name was Whit Peter. He was an enslaved African American who escaped from Louisiana Plantation in March 1863. Gaining freedom when he reached the Union camp near Baton Rouge, he became known as the subject of photographs documenting the extensive scarring of his back from whippings received in slavery. He was more than a slave, though. History reports him to have served in the U.S. Army at the rank of sergeant. Here's another example, and I'll get to the types. And some of you, because of your age or maybe your history buffs, may remember Napalm Girl. And if you don't, she's, she was from South Vietnamese, Vietnam, excuse me, a Vietnamese girl at the age of nine, was depicted in the Pulitzer Prize winning photograph during the Vietnam War in 1972. The picture gave reality of the gruesomeness of the Vietnam War. 
But after I did some more research, even as a little girl, she reported being in the hospital, having to miss school. And she said that it, during that time, she asked God, why? Sometimes pictures speak many words. So, Napalm Girl, if you remember, she was seen running naked down the street because of the bomb that was dropped. The title of, of my sermon today is Images Speaks a Thousand Words. And they create narratives sometimes that are to the eye of, of the beholder. But I'm here to tell you today that although we have witnessed images of death and, and witnessed images of suffering and of pain, no image can equate to the gruesomeness and the image and of what happened to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may recall in, in, in the word that, that he was accused for being exactly who he was. He was called out his name. He was publicly scourged, that means whipped. He was spat upon, he was beat up. The Bible reports that he was given bitter drink, yet without a mumbling word. And I'm here to encourage you today that we serve a great God and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. We serve where we did not physically witness the gruesomeness of his beating. But through further study, we find that with the instruments that they used, that each time they struck our Lord and our Savior, flesh was being ripped from him. Yet without a word. You will find it document, documented in all the Gospels, different accounts, but it's still, the imagery is still there. We will find that he was called out, again, his name, and, and that he was abused and that he was shunned even by people that was closest to him. You recall Judas? Judas was one of the disciples that walked and was taught by our Lord and Savior. You remember Peter? Jesus told Peter that before the cock crowed twice, you will deny me. Now we would think that after everything
thing that Jesus Christ went through. After being spat upon and, and knowing the sacrifice that he placed himself because he was without sin. If you can imagine the, 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 the humiliation, if you can think in your mind that image of, of the bruising and the beating, but yet he did it for you and for me. For people like us that still deny him in certain ways. Some years uh, within our ministry, we played the passion of, of Christ. And I can recall, and I speak for myself in this example, not wanting to see the image that the movie portrayed of how our Lord and Savior was beaten. I found that I could not take it. I found that to see it, 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 it brought conviction within me. And then there was another time that I saw it and I made myself look at it. Because I said that if I can witness it, if I can stand to look at it, perhaps my behaviors will change. The miracle about what was witnessed at that time was that he was brought up on charges that he was totally innocent for. That's the Lord that we serve. That's the God that we serve. And he is still saving people today. He is still advocating for people like you and I today because the Bible says that he, he sits at the right hand of the Father. Even for me who deny him. So you may say, well, how is it that we as Christians can deny the Savior? One way is by speak, not speaking up on truth and righteousness. Not telling people the truth about who God is, but participating in conversations that is not uplifting. God is telling us today that today is the day of salvation. For me, I have to keep the image of what they did to my Lord and Savior in my forefront because it helps to guide me although I fall short. But I thank God that him being my advocate, he, him being our advocate, we can come boldly to the cross and we can ask for forgiveness. I thank God today that we don't have to just focus on images of injustice. That we can focus on the image of the cross. We can focus on what he did by remaining on the cross for the likes of me. Even when I'm not deserving the Bible says that Christ commended his love toward us. That while we were yet in sin, while we were yet denying him, while we were yet stuck on ourselves, Jesus Christ died for the likes of you and me. Today is the day of salvation, people of God. 
Today is the time that you and I can repent for our wrongdoing and truly come clean with Jesus Christ and truly come clean with, with the people that we love and care for and ask for forgiveness. That we may be reconciled with him once again today. We don't want to continue to walk as though we are Christians, but have a Judas type mentality. We don't want to continue to walk as though we're Christians and have a Peter like mentality. But we want to be that Christian that takes up our cross daily and follow him. Take up the shame. Take off the the mis uh, uh, take up the misappropriations. Take up the backbiting, and follow Jesus Christ today. And if you're listening by Facebook Live, and if you do not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin, today is the day. Today is the day that you can give up on yourself. Today is the day that you can give up trying to do things right. Today is the day you don't have to put this down and put that down. God is, said, God is saying today, follow me. Follow me. I can remember Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Images speaks a thousand words. Let's give God praise, glory, and honor for who he is and what he is doing for us today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that we take on Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, truly it is in you that we live, we move, and we have being. We thank you, Jesus Christ, that you died on the cross. Let us keep that image before us, Lord God. That we may conduct ourselves as true followers, Lord God, in word and in deed today. And Heavenly Father, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that, that does not know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord God, do something within their heart to, to make them make it be easy for them today to accept you because we don't want to leave this place or leave this moment in time the same way that we've come in Lord God we thank you Heavenly Father for your word because your word gives us life your word is protection your word is our strength your word is our peace it is our covering your word gives us life, Lord God. And we recommit today as those that are followers and those that are contemplating. In Jesus' name, amen. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is easy. First, admit that you are a sinner. Believe that he is Lord and Savior. Confess your sins before Jesus Christ. And today you can be a new creature, amen? Come on, let's give God praise and glory and honor because God is great and he is greatly to be praised. At this time, we thank you so very much for joining us here at the church, the body of Christ. Remember, you can find us on the web at thechurchthebody.org. There you can see who we are and what we are doing and what we are about. Amen. And there are um, a giving tab. Feel free to click on that and, and, and give toward the efforts that I previously spoke about. And for those that are here in the parking lot, please don't leave without giving of your time and offerings.
thank you